Relax, the keyboard is off, the press box is closed, and the mic is just getting warmed up as the guardian of the blue paint turned writer is about to enlighten us. The show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. For this week's show, with school back in session, we grade the GM of the Flyers and is it a passing grade? Welcome to the Hockey Writers, Inc. Join Lance and Steele as we bring you all the latest on the Flyers. Hi guys, we're back with another edition of the Hockey Writers Inc. I'm your host, Lance Green. And I'm your co-host, Steel Flyers. And man, Lance, I tell you what, <laughs> great to see you again. How you doing? I am okay. How about yourself? Good, 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 good. Man, doing really good, doing really good. Uh, you enjoying your summer? I am. I said, I'm, I'm enjoying it getting cooler. I'm enjoying seeing that grass die. I'm about tired of it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, we definitely have had a break uh, in the weather for sure. Like the humidity. I mean, like we had a 90 degree day today, but the humidity right. just dropped right off. And didn't so, feel yeah. anything like it. Yeah. No, for sure. So that's great, man. I'm glad to hear that you're doing good. Uh, doing good here at Steel Flyers. Um, guys, folks, let me tell you something. So I saw the 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 preliminary designs of the website. And so has Lance. And we both have this to say <laughs> about the new website design. Oh, my gosh. And the store. Holy smokes. Wait till you guys see it. Holy smokes. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be so awesome. And that should be coming out here real soon. Um, I'm going to be hopefully talking to him, to him tomorrow. So hopefully that will. We'll get that going here and have that up and running here really soon. So I can't wait. But it's going to be a new website, new store. Thank you, everybody, for checking us out, for watching us. Uh, man, we can't can't thank you guys enough. Really appreciate all the support. Um, once again, thank you to Spreaker for all their great help uh, and getting us out there on all the podcasting platforms. All you have to do is go to your favorite podcasting platform like iHeart or Google or Spotify or Amazon or Apple. Pick any one of them. Type in Hockey Writers Inc. And you'll be able to find us. And there we go. And you just hit the subscribe and the follow and enjoy the show that way. So, Lance, we got 91 episodes now, man. This is 91. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited about this one. Me too. Oh my gosh, me too. Because folks, I'm here to tell you, episode number 91, with school back in session, we grade the GM of the Flyers, and is it a passing grade? And, you know, the only thing I can hear in the back of my mind is that price is right. Wah, wah, wah. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, when you pick the wrong door. Or whatever, you know, you pick the wrong prize and you get that, you know, fail music. Like, that's kind of how I yeah. feel. <laughs> mm. All right. So you pointed something out before we were talking and we were, you know, comparing notes and everything because we always do that before the show and, and stuff. And uh, you pointed something out and I thought that it would be a great – you thought that it would be a great idea to talk about it. And The Athletic, I believe it was, uh, what, last week? Something or like Late that, last yeah. week or early – Early this week, late last week, uh, like after the show, we after the show we did last week, and then like before this one, the athletic posted a grade, if you will, on all the NHL teams, um, how they're being run as far as their management, um, and and you know the whole experience, I guess, right. you know and quality of players and blah 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 the whole you know. shebang yeah the whole shebang right uh i mean it was pretty detailed right and I, I don't usually go to tout um places that you have to subscribe to um but this was <laughs> i don't know i don't know this was pretty detailed report card that was um based off of what the the fans from the fans and they did every team uh for the nhl so what did the Flyers get, Lance? Uh, not a passing grade, that's for sure. Uh, no. Yeah, if I came home with that uh, grade when I was a kid, I'd be in trouble. Let's, you know, say let's just say we'd be way past in trouble. We would be yeah. grounded. We would be, you know, yeah, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, I never thought of it like that, Lance. If I had brought a report card home like that, 
Are you kidding? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah there fun. you go. <laughs> I ought to try to find a way to make that look like a different letter than, you know, I ought to put another, you know, bump on the bottom of it and say, yeah, it's a B minus. Yeah, it's a B. B minus. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Not, not a D. D minus. So, yeah, they they really kind of laid it out there. I mean, Flyers ranked 32nd in just about everything uh, on that list. And if that's not an eye-opener for you, I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying. On today's show... <laughs> We're going to try to give a grade here to the general manager of the Flyers. And not just from, you know, last year or anything like that. Or Since he's off, been hired. Season, but this is an all encompassing yes. aspect here from the date he was hired till now. Is, is the team better than they were when he started? December 3rd, 2018 was the day that Chuck Fletcher was sworn into office or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> had the press conference and said, hey, this is going to be the new general manager because it was right after, or what, uh, 10 days after Hexy was fired. They, right. they, 10 days, right? It was something crazy like that. Even that, I mean, that should have been a red flag right there when they fired Hextall and then it was, there wasn't a guy that was done sooner yeah. You know, like they just kind of took their time to do that. That should have been a red flag, I think, right there. So Chuck Fletcher was hired December 3rd, 2018. Since he has been hired till August uh, 25th, 2020 is when we're taping this show right now today. So that's that's our grading spectrum of Chuck Fletcher. That will include draft picks that have been traded away. Players that have been traded away or waived or, gosh, I, I didn't even think about this, but we could probably give you a list as long as the players that have been traded away that weren't re-signed mm -hmm. or a list of players as long as that list of players that shouldn't have been re-signed that were, <laughs> yep. right? You know what I mean? So good gravy. Failed to sign draft picks, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So let's start off with this is the biggest thing that I that really jumps off the page at me. And I went and I did a little digging and I did a little research and, you know, and I just wanted to be curious to see how many draft picks the Flyers have traded since Chuck Fletcher has been the general manager. Mm -hmm. How many do you think that is? Now, now that's just since 2018. Right. Oh, that's double digits for sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Of the number of draft picks, and usually, you know, there's seven rounds of draft picks. So you would think that on average, most team gets at least between five and seven draft picks every season, depending on trades and the like, on average, right? Right. All right, so since 2018, 15 draft picks have been traded away from the Flyers. Um, and of those 15 draft picks, two of them are first-rounders. Two of them. One of them next year for next year's draft, 2023. Or uh, 2024. I'm sorry, 2023. My mistake, 2023. That's one of the ones that they traded away. The other one they traded away was the one for Arista Line, which was the year before or last year or whatever, right? So that's two number one draft picks since he's been general manager that have been traded away. In some pretty – okay, last year wasn't exactly the best year, but – a number one draft pick in, in last year's draft would have been a heck of a lot better than only getting a second round draft pick. Wouldn't you agree? 
Yeah, I wasn't overly uh, happy with who we ended either. up with anyway. Right. Yeah, so. You know what I mean? So, and of those 15, two of them number ones, um, five second round draft picks. That, I think, hurts the most. Mm-hmm. And then there's a plethora of number threes and number fours. And then, of course, there's, you know, the obligatory five, six, and sevens. But there's there's just too many of the top round draft picks that have just gone away. You know what I mean? That not necessarily. There were some some trades of draft picks that we got nothing in return. Yeah. I, well, this this next draft, let's let's look at this. This next draft, 2023, they do have their first. They don't have uh, their second because that was in the mix uh, with. Restalinen and Hag, yep. To uh, well, to to acquire you know Restalinen, and they now don't have their third round pick either because they use that to uh, acquire uh, Tony D'Angelo. Right for so, next year. For next year, so they have the first. They have the Rangers third. They have Florida's third. So they have other picks. They have a fourth from uh, Edmonton for the Bursard. They have their own fourth. So they have multiple mid-round picks, uh, but they're going to be without a second-round pick for sure. So with all that being said, yes, uh, Chuck does very well try to move up sometimes and get get some picks. He did good with that. When he, he got wisdom, he moved up. I'm okay with a move like that to trade away a pick. But when you're talking about trading away first-round picks and – to get a guy that's a career, you know, minus a hundred and something, two hundred and something player, uh, it's that's not the guy I'm willing to give first round picks away for, especially when they're in the top fifteen for sure. So, exactly, and and let's face it, in some of the last couple of years, the Flyers have had, you know, not wretched first round selection where they would have landed. If they would have had a first round pick, you know what I mean? Because they finished so bad in the, you know, in the standings, they would have had a better selection at a first round. Well, I mean, if they didn't trade the the pick for Ristolainen, and they could have had uh, one of the best young goalie prospects I've seen come out in Sebastian Kosa, um, you know, but. They lost that opportunity, so. We're not even grading Chuck on the woulda, coulda, shouldas. Right, right. Because <laughs> there's that, that list is too long, too. That'd be three shows and stuff. Uh, yeah, we'd ha- yeah, we would be here for six hours for that. Right, so we right. don't have six hours. <laughs> Here's the other thing that jumped off the page at me, too, about this, right? And I, I to be honest with and then you look at the names that are on this list, right? So... There were quite a number of players since 2018 that have been traded. By Chuck, yeah. By Chuck. All right? And let's just start with Giroux. Well, the failure to re-sign him, the failure to do any kind of make any kind of headway with that just to me is failure one number one. Well, and the fact that he walked. And you hardly got anything for him. Well, yeah. You know, uh, well, Giroux held a lot of cards in that as well. It was a bad I contract. Agree. It was a bad contract given to him. Uh, a lot of, you know, he basically told Chuck where he wanted to go. So Florida knew that that's what they had. And I, although I like Owen Tippett, uh, I always liked him since juniors. Yeah. That's not a first in 2024 and Owen Tippett is not my idea of what we should have been getting back from for Giroux. Exactly. Now Colorado was in talks of giving Justin Barron up a, a legit first pairing projected defender and, and multiple other, again, the coulda, woulda, shouldas, but uh, definitely, you know, as you see more and more teams out there, the the teams that do get rid of these players on a on a annual basis, would like Detroit and Buffalo and all these guys who know they're going to lose these guys come free agency because they don't want to sign back there at this point. 
their kind of returns are much greater, much greater than what the Flyers got for Giroux, for sure. I mean, you're looking at first round picks for the next, the following, you know, draft in a couple of months, at least. Uh, not somebody that's going to be able to be drafted two years from now and then have to develop for a year or two, possibly. You know, that's that's four or five years away from getting a return for a player. So, yes, that was a horrible one, for sure. That That's right on the top. But uh, I think it all started, Steele, when he traded away Wayne Simmons, in my mind, to the Predators for, for Ryan Hartman. Now, Ryan Hartman had a great year this year, but uh, that's years away from out. what it didn't work out in Philly. That's for sure. No. And to trade away, you know, a beloved player like Wayne Simmons. Yes, he was on the down slope, but he's still playing Produced. And, and producing. Yes. And I mean, he was a top goal scorer for the Flyers for numerous years. And, and fan you get favorite, all, fan locker room favorite, leader. All the things. All I mean, come things. on. He's, Great player. I, oh, I have to say of the the modern era or, you know, the, the 2000s, I'd say he's probably one of my favorite flyer players think, to come I out. Think that would be you know, the same for a lot of fans. The Wayne uh, train, man. Come on. He definitely he definitely stayed around for quite a few years here in Philly. He was beloved because he played the game the right way. He played it hard. He played it night in and night out, injured. Didn't matter. Yeah, he was out I on mean, the ice. He wasn't he the best heart. skater. He wasn't the fastest skater. But, man, he had the biggest heart. And you really didn't want to mess with him, man, because no, he would I take mean, you down. The guy was like 175 pounds taking on heavyweights. Yeah. And, you know, and taking him down. And taking like, him down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but you get Ryan Hartman for him. That was the first inclination for me. Like, what are you doing? Like, Simmons was a little bit banged up at the time. Yeah. You know, he had a history of playing injured which is, you know, honorable in itself, but you get Ryan Hartman back. And then you look at, and a big one for me that I think never turned the Flyers back was trading Racco Gudis. And the physicality. Well, that, was the, that was the Racco Gudis for Niskanen trade. It was. We got one year out of Niskanen. Yeah. One year out of Niskanen, right? Mm -hmm. He was great in that one year. But Racco Gudis has been top five in the NHL in hits. Every single year since we traded him. Yeah. All right. And I'm talking like 300 hits a year. And and yeah. you look at the Flyers and the one of the main problems with this team is their lack of physicality. And Gudis, although he was a third pairing defenseman for the Flyers at the time, he was solidified that that defense and you could trust him out there. And you can't say that for the third pairing of the Flyers. For, since he left, nope. you know, nope. you can't say that. And and it's not all about grit and everything like that, but it is about being able to let your star players like Proveroff on defense and everything like that rest and have the ability to entrust in somebody like a Racco Gudis to be able to sit there and clear somebody off the puck of the opposition coming down and get the play going back the other way so that your star players don't have to feel like they need to jump back on the ice at, you know, right All after the they sit down, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that was a big one in my mind. Still, you got any others that, that stick out to you? Good gravy, dude. I, look, I have a list here of guys that have been traded away sure. from the Flyers. OK, I, I'm just going to read off some of the names. One of the and one of the names that's on here is a name that's that wasn't even traded. It was waived. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I, this is the kind of stuff that's blown me away. Right. Giroux traded. Derek Broussard traded. Connor Bunneman, German Rubistov, Shane Gossespair, Radko Gudis, Jakob Voracek, Wayne Simmons, Robert Hag, Knack. He was waived. But yet right. he's picked up by Colorado, gets his name on the cup. Typical right. ex flyer player. Philippe Myers goes away. Nolan Patrick. Shame about Nolan Patrick, but a number one draft pick that got traded away. Right. Michael Roffel. That to me was just why did you? I, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, there's a couple other guys on here. TJ uh, Brennan. Um, uh, 
Gene Franco, uh, Barube, Ryan Hartman, Anthony Stolars, Dale Weiss, Christian Folan, um, Tyler Lear, Jordan Weir. You know what I mean? Some of these guys, eh. Some of these guys are AHL players and all that. But I get it. But the the fact that the number of players that have gone away since he's been here. Well, I'm okay with that for some of them, but the right. return the return is what matters. If you're going to – I get coming in, you're going to want to change the team. You're going to want to fit it to your coach. You're going to want to fit it to, to you being the GM. And if they're not your guys, you want to get some of your guys in there, I get that. But Phil Myers uh, was a big one. You know, Nolan Patrick, Nolan Patrick, I think needed to be moved. Obviously, you know, he's still showing that he's injured all the time yeah, and injury yeah. prone. Yeah. Uh, but you go out and you you give all that away for Ryan Ellis, who has five seasons now, not even when he was traded. He had six, but five seasons now at 6.25 on the books that it's going to cost the Flyers. And you've gotten four or five games out of him, period. Mm-hmm. All right. See, so it's funny not that only... you mentioned that because my very next thing is the biggest eyesore on all of that yeah. is Ryan Ellis. Right. And this is the return. This is the big return that we got. We traded a number two overall pick for, you know, and a guy like Nolan Patrick who could go somewhere else, had the chance to go somewhere else and possibly be something. And a young top four defenseman for and from our team anyway. And you get Ryan Ellis back, a guy that has never but one year in his 10-plus year career played all 82 games. Every season he's hurt. So you go out and you trade for a guy that gets paid 6.25, that's an injury-prone player, and go figure, as soon as he comes here, he gets injured? This is what I'm talking about. This bad. This is not only a bad trade, but it hurts years down the road long after chuck fletcher is going to be gone it's going to be somebody else's problem all right you know that's an interesting point that you mentioned there lance because there's going to be so i mean with each new gm you always get a certain amount of of um previous guys you know garbage that you have to you know what i mean and what's really been sad with the flyers is that all that the previous guys done is passed down debt mm. like they they don't have the um capital to make any trades to get anybody they don't have enough good players on the team to draw any of the free agents they don't have any of the cap space to pay for any of the free agents you know what i mean and then you got this team filled with a bunch of tweeners and guys that shouldn't even be on the ahl right Yep. And and that's the thing. You you have to bring back a return when you move some of these guys. Yes, you're moving them for a reason, but they got to you got to find value or somebody that is going to need that type player even though, even if they don't work for you. And Shane Gossesbarrow, like you said on that list was one of those type players. Um, a guy that can skate He's a puck-moving defenseman. He's a power play specialist. He has a shot, or at least he did at one time, uh, for the Flyers. They, But they they didn't find any use for him. He's In my mind, it was a good move um, to get rid of him, but it definitely wasn't a good return. That's you, what I mean. Yeah, he, it was a good a, move to get rid of him, but, but the return he's wasn't, a career, didn't justify the move. You got cap space. You didn't even get anything back. You got cap space, right? So... He's a career minus player. And you gave up two picks, too. Right. You gave up a second round pick for for Arizona to take him on. And you gave up a seventh round pick. I'd be okay with a seventh round pick. But you gave up a second round pick in Shane Gossespera, who was for the Arizona. He had 51 points last year. Right. He had 51 points last year for for Arizona. He was still a minus 23 player. But you gave up a a top four defenseman. and a second round pick for nothing. You got back nothing. Like you gotta be better at, at negotiations and, and at least, you know, be some kind of used car salesman out there and, and talk <laughs> and up not, what you got, even if it's a piece you, of junk. You know I what mean? I mean? 
not only did you not get anything back, but you had to give up two draft picks yeah. and Shane Gossel's pair. I mean, oh, God. I'm with, yeah, you need to Hextall. be some kind of a salesman or something. Hextall gave up less, uh, I think, to when he traded Chris Pronger's contract away when Arizona or Arizona yeah. knew, knew he wasn't ever going to play again. Yeah, yeah. He gave up less to, to do yeah. that. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But the only the only good trade that I can see is that it's at least even was trading Voracek away For to Cam get Atkinson. Cam Atkinson back. I mean, I think that it was an equal return. Now Voracek had a great year in Columbus. Um yeah, but, but but in the same token, I think Cam Provided had a great for, year for Philly. Had, he had a great year for Philly for what it was. He's, he provided what they needed, more yeah. of a goal scorer, yeah. more of a, a person that was going to push the play. Voracek was too much like Giroux. For yeah. 10, 11 years, they, they were together, and all they did is play hot potato. So I could see getting rid of Voracek to try to bring somebody else in. That was my only kind of even up trade that uh, you know I saw that Chuck – at least drew, you know, even on, not lost. And, yeah, and that, that, here. yeah, that that one is the uh, – I would have to agree with you on that one, sir. That of all the trades, that's the one that I would say is of the – on the plus side. You know, and I also agree. Look, I, I agree. I like Owen Tippett as well. I mean, I think the guy is going to – if given the opportunity and if he plays with some of the right players, I think he can be – pretty dangerous player out there you know he's going to be one of those guys that when he you know swings his legs over the boards and hops onto the ice your head needs to be on a swivel because he's dangerous and will be able to score i hope he turns into a, that kind of a player that would be great i would love to see that happen for the flyers that's, that's a big a, risk when most other teams are getting a, if. A, a first you know in a, a a first round pick that's going to happen in a couple of months after you draft them. Yeah. Not two years. Yeah, and exactly. They're, they're getting at least a player or two back in a lot of trades, even at, you know, the trade deadline that they're going to be able to use for the next season that are going to be NHL type players. And the, and Chuck didn't get that done. So. And that's the other thing too. You know what I mean? Have any of, I mean, we've talked about the return on the, 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 the trades of the players. But how about – what about some of, like, the draft picks? Like, some of Chuck's draft picks. Have any of them made the team? I mean, have any of them contributed major minutes playing no. for the Flyers? Absolutely not. Uh, can we name any one guy no. that he's drafted? You know, a lot of his prospects seem promising. Especially I like this draft from, from this – you know, last draft yeah, with, with Cutter Goch. I mean, it's hard to screw up a top five pick, you know, when out, when they're pretty much plastered out there, you know, you, you can easily get a player that should turn around and play in the NHL next season or at least a year after that in the top five picks. So I, I do like this last draft. Yeah, I but like again, with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, like Kaplan, Bump, I like all those guys. But again, that's just prospects and until they can turn into nhl caliber players on a consistent basis they really don't mean squat i like cam york uh he he showed signs i think he was misused last year he's a left-hand shot and they're trying to make him play right hand side um bobby brink he he got injured he showed a little something uh ronnie atard you know all these guys uh you know have touched at least the the tip of you know joining the team. Um, you know, Emil Andres had a great World Junior uh, championship there and looked promising. But I mean, yeah, and we also nobody, got, nobody, nobody, uh, still, nobody's cracked the lineup. Nobody's yeah, cracked I mean, the lineup. La yeah. Dejeuner, you know, Tyson Forster, Tyson Forster uh, looked looked good. Yeah. but still has yet to really hit the NHL running. And, and I mean, he's been here for, I mean, it's not only a year we're talking about, guys. It's It's been since 2018, 2019 was his first draft, I think. So, 
I mean, those 2019 was his first draft. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you should have had at least a player or something or two by make, now, by now make it to the NHL, a surprise guy, even out of nowhere, just jump up and be ready to go. And, mm. you know, that's, that brings us to one of the next question or concerns for me is him filling his roster with, um, I, I want to say a sense of uh, neophobia, uh, and and it it's basically means an extreme or irrational fear or, or dislike of anything new or unfamiliar. All right, so <laughs> so if, if you all look, right, all right, right. Look, I like if, it. If you look over the years now. You see a bunch of retreads, right? You see a bunch of products that he's come in and he's filled in the lineup or or either traded for, brought in, signed free agents and filled roster spots where they should have probably been given to a younger guy who's up and coming. But, I mean, you look at he brought in Ryan Hartman. He had him in Minnesota. Nick Sealer, although I like him, he's a retread from his days of prior you know, employment. Eric Gustafson, Chris Stewart, uh, Gerald Mayhew, Curtis Gabriel, uh, and, and it even goes to the coaches, guys. Mike Yeo, and uh, who did he bring in? John Torchetti or whatever like that yeah, at the end of the season, whatever, yeah. to come in and help him out to finish the season. It's all guys that caused him to get fired in Minnesota or in Jersey or wherever. Uh Anaheim before that, you know, all these guys are retreads, guys that he brought in that had a little bit of success prior that he decided to bring back here because they didn't work the first time he signed them. So I I don't get it. I don't get it when you have some prospects that are promising that should be getting some ice time. You know, the Flyers uh, are generally an older team, and this is part of it too. I mean, you keep he keeps bringing back your guy Justin Braun. I don't know why he keeps bringing him back. Of course, you know they brought back Nate Thompson. Nate twice. Thompson. Nate oh, Thompson. I mean, good grief! And not even that, but he the guys that were here even before him with the Isaac Radcliffe's and the the German Rubistoffs and the Connor Bunnemans and the Morgan Frost and the, the Alex uh, Lyons of the world, you know, that were already here. He just kept them around. Uh, he's got rid of, you know, Rubistoff now. And I, I think he just signed in the KHL because he can't hack it yeah, over here. And so Alex Lyons gone too. Alex Lyons gone too, finally. But he kept them around for a year or two more. And, and he's still keeping around Radcliffe and, you know, and, and, and Morgan Frost, who to date haven't really done anything. And these guys are taking up roster spots, taking up roster spots. And, you know, you got Linus Sandin and, uh, you know, all these guys. Now we just signed, the Flyers just signed a Luca Burzen. He's the ECHL player. They signed him to play in the AHL, right? He had 10 games in the AHL last year for Colorado's team, the Eagles, and he had zero points. So why are we going to sign him to the Phantoms? Like, it's just filling the roster with garbage or retreads or players that aren't promising, guys that are just been there for years and are stagnant, right? So why not why not go after some of these players? And we talked about in previous shows, you know, he's missed out on a lot of players, you know, to fill this roster, the Jan Rutus, the Matthew Bennings, who I said before, they don't have a backup goalie. They could have went out and tried to get Lindgren out there from St. Louis that now he's with Washington. Max Domi would have been a nice fit. Ian Cole, a veteran defenseman. Oh, I would have liked Ian Cole, has, yeah has Stanley Cups rather than Justin Braun. Uh, Paul Statsny, you know, had 20 goals last year for Winnipeg. He was just signed for a million and a half. I mean, I'd even take, I didn't even take our boy hot dog king, Phil Kessel. Kessel was just signed to Vegas for a million and a half. Robert <laughs> Haig just went to Detroit 
He was a pretty serviceable defenseman, pretty solid guy, right? Physical player, a guy who I like, uh, got got signed for 750K, right? Martin Frick left LA, went to St. Louis. St. Louis is playoff contender, right? The guy has the record, all-time record, 109 mile an hour, 0.2 slap shot in the AHL All-Star game competition. Why not get a guy like that instead of bringing in Luca Burzin to to play in the AHL? You know what I mean? If you're gonna get AHL level players, then get some of the best up, ones you can. Roster, go out and get some of the best players. I don't get I don't get these just fill in get get who whoever will yeah. you call up first and they'll say yes because you don't you're not effective at your job you're not effective at your job uh going back the team lost oscar limblon i think they signed him for too much you know and you know they had to buy him out basically forced him to buy him out then yeah still buy him out but whose fault was that whose fault was that chucks he's the one that created the deal he's the one that created the issue he's the one that overpaid him uh coming mm -hmm. back he did how he was going to play at, or be physically after coming back from cancer, but you, you give him a big old deal and he, he's not able to live up to it. And since he got bought out and now somebody else is benefiting from him. And when you could have got a deal in place where it, it's a prove it deal, Hey, look, you know, we want to keep you around. We understand that you've been sick. You know, here's this deal. You, you'll still have a contract with us. We still want you on our team, but if, We'll give you a one-year prove-it deal, and if you do, we'll open up the checkbook next year. You know, you're just coming back from cancer. We understand that. We don't want to, you know, force your hand to have to be something you're See, not. You know, that's a perfect point that you make right there, Lance. It's like he's overpaying for everything. He brought in uh, uh, um, Hayes. He brought in Kevin Hayes and way overpaid for that. You know what I mean? And then the deals that he's done, right? The Couturier deal, the Provorov deal, the Konechny. Um, the Konechny deal, right? All of these deals that he's done he's, are overpaying. Well, he's paying them for what he wants them to be. They don't deserve okay, that Okay, that's a good money. way to put that. Right? He... he, he what they're projected to be. Okay, well, that's great that you're doing that, but you're also cutting off your nose to spite your face because you're you're leaving yourself no room. And when these guys don't live up to those contracts, he wants to sign them for term, I get it. You want to keep a guy like Couturier around because he is a solid player, but or Provorov because he's a young, promising defenseman. Why do you pay them like they've been in the league 10 years and have won, a, won you a Stanley Cup already? I don't get that. You you, yeah, you need to yeah. prove yourself to, to earn that contract before you're offered that. Of course they're going to sign it because who wouldn't, who wouldn't? when you're, <laughs> you're offering ridiculous yeah. money compared yeah. to something millions of dollars over – comparable and i've written articles on that before comparing similar type players with similar productions and they're vastly overplayed uh, paid so you know you you go through the list and it's just question after question comes out and you, you missed out on johnny goudreau we all know that we won't beat that to to a pulp any more than it already is it stings we get it but like you said Steele, they lost they lost nak because they waived him Somebody, the Flyers weren't using him right. So who picked him up? Colorado. And now he's got his name and dented the Stanley Cup. Uh, even to like, remember yeah, it by. Yeah, the first you know I mean? one to dent the Stanley Cup. Like, oh, way to go, Nack. Way to represent. You know? But right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then how about the failures to sign? You, you failed to sign Connor McLennan, who was a 2026 round pick, who had – a player who had 43 goals in the WHL. Why isn't this guy fighting for a roster spot with the Phantoms? Or at, at least, if not the Flyers. I mean, he, I'm with he had, you. He had 81 points this season. He didn't he, even play anywhere close to 81 games. Exactly. Well over a point-per-game player. 
why isn't this guy getting a shot before signing some kid that can't even hack it in the ECHL over the past couple of years? Uh, you know, but, that's funny that you mentioned that, though, because I'm going to I'm going to throw a, a name in that list. Sure and that's really? Ivan Fedotov, because if they would have signed him back, what, two, three years ago when they had a chance before he re-signed for the KHL. Things you, would you, be different now. Well, you needed he wanted reassurance. He wanted reassurance. He had a starting job in the KHL for years. Why would he give Making that up? big bucks. Why would he give that up to come over and play AHL minutes? Because you keep signing back Brian Elliott uh, year after year, or you keep signing Alex Lyons, so he couldn't even be a potential starter in the AHL out exactly. of the gate. Exactly. You know, why would he give that up? So at the first sight that the Flyers actually need him and can't get anybody willing to sign. He signs the contract, but now this happened because all the, the war and everything else going on over there. So, you know, and, and you you talk about another guy, and and we talked about it last show. A uh, uh, six foot three, two hundred pound plus right hand shot defenseman in in Jack Saint Ivany, uh, eighteen uh, Hextall pick, fourth round pick. Now he's playing in Pittsburgh because the Flyers we'll failed be to sign him guy. again. Right. And that's not the first one, right? Mark Mark Friedman. Mark Friedman was a serviceable NHL defenseman that they kept he toying around waved. with. He, he was waved. waved. And guess who picked him up? Hextall picked him right up and he played it halfway decent for Pittsburgh in a pinch. You know, it's these constant losses and, and fumbles that are that are causing people not even to want to sign here. Exactly. You know, they're not appreciated. They're stuck behind guys that are 35 years old and, you know, are at the tail end of their careers. But they keep getting the the notch over these younger players and these prospects. So they're not even wanting to sign here anymore. Yeah, you, you, you go over the overpaying, which we talked about. Even this season, off season, they needed to do something right on defense because Ryan Ellis is questionable at best. Um, and he might not ever play again, I'm hearing. So Anthony D'Angelo, you go out and give give him a two-year, $10 million deal, $5 million a year. You know what he got paid last year in Carolina? A million dollars. How are you doing? A million dollars. Did he play well enough to deserve a raise? Yes, he did. But Not that much. I mean, that, that more than doubled his pay. And you uh, had they, to trade to get him. And you traded to get his rights and, and all that to whatever, to sign him and whatever. Good grief. Good grief. Uh, you, you give a four-year deal to a 30-plus-year-old fighter, and, and you give him a $750,000 raise. He made a million dollars last year. And now you give him a four-year deal for a 30-some-year-old fighter? Doesn't make sense. Uh, re-signings this year. Jackson Cates. Is he is he worth it? I don't know. Tanner Lazinski. He's had a lot of injuries. He looked well in college, but Isaac Ratcliffe, former 50-goal scorer in juniors, but what has he done since? Morgan Frost. I mean, seen he's been... Enough of that. I've seen enough of that, and and you know, feel the vomit coming up in the back of my neck, uh, giving him so many chances. <laughs> Cooper Marodi, you you bring him back. He was a Hextall draft pick that that Fletcher traded away stupidly uh, when he was up and coming for Michigan and all that. Justin Braun, you bring back him. We've talked about that numerous times. He's a serviceable third pairing defenseman, but. Who knows? He'll probably be playing with Provorov again this season. Do you know that we gave up a second and a third round pick just to get him initially? Yeah. Right? I mean, seriously? You traded a second and a third round pick to get Justin Braun? Yeah. Right? Then you trade him away to New York, and what did they get from him? Were they a third round pick? 
Something like that, yeah. Right? They got a third round pick. And then they go and re sign him again for this year. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Kevin Cottonin or whatever his name is. Yeah, they yeah. brought him back. Uh, yeah. He wasn't worth a bag of beans, but. Um, you know, I, I I think I could still if I if I was the Flyers GM, I seriously think I could still to this day after everybody to date's been signed, I could still go out with the free agents still available and have a better off season than Chuck has had. Wow, I I uh, do. I mean, I the, yeah. The Flyers need a goaltender, right? The fly you you, you bring in Troy Grossneck, a guy who's had. Uh, less than five games in the, of NHL experience, and he's 30-some years old, why not go out and get Braden Holpe, a guy who's won a Vesna, a Jennings Trophy, and a Stanley Cup? He has almost 300 wins to his career. He played last year for $2 bucks. Yeah. And he's still out there. Still, he'd probably, yeah. He'd probably take less at this point just to be able to still play. Easily. He's got a career 915 save percentage and uh, under 2.6 goals against average for his career. That's a lot better than any goalie for the past five, ten years that the Flyers have had. And that's uh, including Carter Hart. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What about what about a guy I talked about, Sonny Milano? Yeah. He's still out there. 26-year-old left winger. Uh, a, a little problem concerning of um, a minus player, but his his attributes. I mean, last year he had a 14 goals, 20 assists, and 34 points. He played really well with some star prospects that they have. But they Anaheim has a plethora. They have a ton of them. He made a million, uh, a million, 1.7 million last year. I think he would at this point take a lot less. Or Evan, Rod, Evan Rodriguez close to that. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Yeah. Evan Rodriguez is out there from Pittsburgh. He made a million dollars last year. He, he wouldn't scored, be bad either. He scored 19 goals last year. He had 43 points. I would take him any day over Justin Braun. Yeah, well, I, I mean, he plays offense. I'd take him any day over Morgan Frost or, uh, let's see, Isaac Radcliffe. You know, all these guys they they brought in. Um you know, Jackson Cates, I'd take him over Jackson Cates. I'd take him over anybody. Tanner Luzinski, all that money is just blown on guys that have been around here, haven't got it done in years past, and you just sign them back because that's what you know. What about Sam Steele? Sam Steele from Anaheim, uh, 2016 first-round pick, 24-year-old center. Uh he had he had 20 points to Morgan Frost 16 last year with the Flyers. Uh, you know, he he made what 700 some thousand. That's that's more than uh, that's less than you just paid Morgan Frost at 800 thousand. So yeah, right. <laughs> Jeez, I, I don't know. And he still has a more upside in my mind than than Morgan Frost. So and yeah. they, those are guys that are still without a job right now. And I think oh, I. Yeah. If I brought that back in, as opposed to some of the re-signings and retools and retreads that that Chuck did, brought back once again, I, I think that would have been a better offseason. And that's not even a good one with what's left. So. I was just going to say, yeah, there's not much left out there. It's pretty slim pickings. But even, even the slim pickings that are out there are still better than the than – the, most of the guys that they've they've re-signed or have selected to sign or whatever the case is. Okay, so I think Paul Stastny would have been a great uh, pickup. <sighs> yeah, he was still out there waiting for a job, waiting for I, a job. I mean, I would have taken Phil Kessel. I mean, as much he's, as I, he definitely his his season definitely went down. He's he's still keep yandling it, trying to reach that break that record again. Yeah, but he's at least at putting point. points on the board and he's at least that a same level as JVR. Yeah. I mean he's at least that level of production. Do you know what I he, mean? He didn't have the goals JVR had this year, but uh Okay. 
you know, he's he's definitely got more years on him too, and he's not getting paid seven million dollars. He's getting paid one point five. So exactly, exactly. So. You still you still have to watch Phil Kessel out there. I'm still more worried about Phil Kessel on the ice than anybody is over JVR. If that makes sense, I would have to agree with you. Yeah, like if, if people I was... people going to watch out for Phil Kessel more than. JVR. JVR, yeah, because JVR will just disappear for games at a time. Ten you know games what I mean? At a time, yeah. Or or a week or two at a time, and you know. Okay, all right. So we've kind of broken it down, I would say, or we've really broken it down. Okay, so we saw the grade. You know, we we talked at the top of the show about the grade that the fans gave the Flyers. So, Mr. Lance Green, writer extraordinaire, what would you give the grade of the Flyers general manager? I mean, I I agree with the fans at this point. Uh, The only thing I really do like is the draft picks uh, that, you know, he's he's really brought in these, especially this last year. Um, The only thing is the Flyers haven't been able to develop them. I like I like Tyson Forrester. I like Gauthier. Um, you know, I like some of these other wisdom. I like Kaplan. I like Alex Bump. I think he's going to be one of the big surprises of this. But I hope to God they uh, can get some training and everything else from somewhere else before they come to the Flyers and can just come to the Flyers because uh, the Flyers development staff is sure, certainly lacking and and has ruined quite a few good prospects lately. So I, I agree with the fans. I'm going to give them a D, D minus for sure. Okay. Um, see, that's the thing that really kills it for me is an example would be um, Cam York. I really think that Cam York is a really good prospect. I think that if he plays his natural position – he can be a, a pretty good contributor to the team. He could be, you know what I mean? I think he could be one of the better defensemen out there. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? If he's played in the correct way. And see, that's the thing that has really bothered me a lot since Chuck has been in uh, and or the coaches that he's used or whatever the case is. He's got the wrong guys in the wrong positions doing the wrong things, having the wrong expectations for guys that aren't capable of those types of things. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. seriously, what kind of expectation could you have on Justin Braun? He is not Niskanen. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying, though, right? right. So, Well, I, I mean, at that, that's just what it is, is comfortability with the people that he's had in place before. He knows them. He already has that conversation with him. It's an easy signing, but I don't want easy signings. I want somebody to get excited about. And I think if they did go out and make a major move to be able to get somebody that the team or other players could get excited about, then you would see the talent willing to come to Philly and willing to sign in Philly. You know, and that's that's just the thing. I get that a lot of these guys like Ian Cole and stuff may not come here because it all actuality, he wants to chase a cup, you know, and that's why he went where he went. I get that. But there's plenty of guys like we already just talked about guys that need a second chance on another team that are, were star players or, or bright spots on their teams and, and simply still out on the market. And, could be had. I want those type players. I'd rather see you take a risk with a younger guy who's got promise to put together with the Joel Farabies and to and and the Owen Tippets of the yeah. world. Yeah. To to get together and start to build something and lose for a season or two, gain those draft picks, wait till Cutter Gauthier comes up, wait till Kaplan develops more, Alex Bump comes up, you know. Forrester develops. Get these guys and pay attention to them. Stop putting the emphasis and the money into guys that are 30, you know, plus years old, 35 years old, 
you know, why? Why keep giving them roster spots? I'd rather see you play the youth and stink together with the youth for a couple of years. Detroit did it. You know, now they're promising. Now they got now they got some great trades, some some you know solid uh, guys who've been in there for a couple of years to to lead them, not just filling roster spots with you know over the hill guys that are taking away playing time for guys like Cam York. You know, that's some of the other thing too that I would like to take into consideration when I'm giving Chuck his grade because. The failed signings, the the inability to get some of like, you know, the inability to have the opportunity to call Johnny Gaudreau and offer him a contract. Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing that really is driving this thing here, I guess you could say, about as far as how I feel as his grade is. And and there's too many of those missteps, the Ryan Ellis being one of them, where you make a trade and the guy's only played four games. You continually bring back the same guys over and over again. Why? That doesn't make any sense. What 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 that that's the mark of 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 uh, schizophrenia when you you know constantly do the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Yeah. You know, it's like you keep bringing back the same things over and over again, but you keep expecting better results. Yeah. You know, he's going to be better this time because I'm offering him more money. You know, it's like, yeah, that's not how that works. That's you know? not how that works. I mean, and it's not it's not for the Flyers not having the prospects. They have the prospects. You, you don't bring in Jay O'Brien, a first-round pick. You, you still have yet to sign him when he's a point-per-game player over the last two seasons in, in the NCAA. Why is he not getting a shot over this joker that they just signed we talked about earlier that yeah. it, who, who hasn't got it done? Why isn't he given the chance to fail rather than bring in some retread player or some guy that is a a nobody that that has made a career i mean it's more than i've ever done so congrats but you know i'm not satisfied with bringing in echl players to to play in the ahl when you have talented first round draft picks that you could sign and convince to come here that's part of your job too that you're failing at the inability like you said to to talk the talk to get somebody convinced to want to come and sign a contract here. You're not selling. You got to be a salesperson and he's I mean, not selling the team. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do have to have a bit of that. You know, you, you I like what you even, called it before used car salesman. Yeah. You need a little used car salesman in it. And yet, yeah, you didn't even need it this off season. You just needed to be able to unload the money because one of the best players in the NHL, Johnny Goudreau wanted to come here which he's been telling you for the past two years uh, that he's wanted to come here in every interview. Yeah, it'd be great to play for Philly one day if I get, ever get the opportunity. You should have had an open checkbook. You should have had a zero balance in your checkbook, you know, uh, negative-wise to be able to come in and just give him whatever he wants. And you didn't. You dropped the ball there. You know, you should have not been signing Couturier Hayes to a big contract, like you said, Provorov to such a big deal, TK to such a big deal. You have to look, if you're a GM, two, three years ahead. You knew Claude Giroux was getting older. You knew he wasn't getting a cup here, so he might want to go. But yeah. instead of using that $8 million to, to, to go out and keep that, to be able to go out and, and sign... A, a guy that can replace him immediately as production wise and Johnny Goudreau, you give it away all the way to overpaying Sean Couturier and overpaying Joel Farabee, who, I mean, he's, he's an up and coming player, but he's not deserving of, in my mind, $5 million a season yet. Not yet. No way. No I would way. say I would feel more comfortable at three something. I mean, He's, he's in that in-between before he gets a, a substantial contract. He's got to do it for, what, he scored 20 goals uh, one season? Okay, great. Do it again. 
Do it. Do it for me do the next again. season. Yeah, and, and then, let me then, see. Yeah. And let me see if I can get you a, a big contract. You know what I mean? The other thing that I want to touch on, this is going to be the last thing that I want to base my grade on, is the fact that when they fired AV, they went the entire, I mean, they had dead coach walking. And then at the end of the season, they still waited until uh, 10 days before the draft, before they hired a coach. I, I see that in and of itself blows me away. Well, that's, Why would you take that long when you knew that you weren't going to have, I mean, you, 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 at some point you knew you were going to have to fire AV and you had all of this time to look at coaches, to send out, you know what I mean? And whatever the case is, and you waited until 10 days before the draft to finally select a coach. You, you waited too long to fire AV. You missed out on Bruce Boudreaux. Then at the, at the end of the things, uh, you know, Barry Trotz is out there. You threw, not confirmed, but, you know, rumor is you threw big time money his way and he rejected it. He would have been, Flyers supposedly threw big, big time money, which would have made him the, the highest paid coach ever in NHL. And he turned it down. He just doesn't want to coach. And, you know, they waited entirely too long uh, to do that. So, uh, you know, and, and put all their eggs in. Oh, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. Well, in the meantime, other good coaches were getting, you know, picked off right and left. And exactly. You know, then you got left with, the, you know, then you got left with John Tortorello, who, questionably his his tactics are, are questionable in this day and age with the new kindler gentler nhl and their players so i i hope it goes well for john tortorello and i hope it goes well for chuck fletcher and he can turn this around but uh, i'm not i'm not betting on it that's for sure so i'm with you i'm gonna give him a d minus as well but I'm going to add an extra minus on there because of the waiting for the extra time for hiring a coach for not only trading away Justin Braun, but bringing him back. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just have to do that just to rub some salt on the wound. I, I'm having a hard time fathoming why he still has a job when you're when when so many of these things uh, we've tried to look at some of the good things that have come back, and there's just not enough good things that have come back. Well, it, it's one thing. With, with a GM, normally, if they're going to get fired, it's because they, they can't do one or the other. They either can't draft, and they spend all their time and all their assets, you know, draft picks and everything else, to get or keep a team uh, at a certain point uh, of, you know, playability and they just get fired at some point because then at some point all those players get old and go about their way and they don't have anybody in the prospect pool yep. to, to refund that because they can't draft or they can draft amazingly and they got talent coming up the pike but the product that they put on the nhl ice isn't isn't the greatest yeah. there's no and development there's, there's no, no yeah. yeah there's there's nobody to to bring butts in the seats and pay the bills you know then they get fired that way but in my mind chuck isn't doing either uh, I, <laughs> yeah I think, that's a good way to put that i i think chuck this last year you know is drafted well but at some point he's got to find the problem why aren't his players getting to the nhl and being ready by now that's a big question for me, too. That's another big reason why the grade was so low for him. You know what I mean? And so I'll tell you what, Lance, we could probably <laughs> talk about this for, what, the next six weeks <laughs> e easily, right? What do you think, right? Yeah, we could, but we're not going we're to. We're not going but, to. Yeah. yeah, no, we're not going to. But um, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to kind of scratch your head and go, hmm, so with that being said, 
Uh, we would like to thank Spreaker for all their help in getting us out there to all the great platforms. Um, we would also like to help or also like to thank InfoQuest for their great design on the website that's going to be coming out. Um, can't wait to see that. That should be coming out real, real soon. So hang tight um, and stay tuned. We'll have uh, announcements when all that stuff's going to happen. Um, wh why don't you tell the folks where we can find you, Lance? Sure. Uh, you can always find me at, on Twitter at uh, LanceGreen39. And uh, soon enough, we're going to try to get a Hockey Writers, Inc., uh, page up as well and post everything straight to that as well for all our shows and and views there so there is a hockey writers in page yeah from yeah. the website it's www.steelflyers.com slash link slash hockey writers inc right right but we would like to try to get like a twitter a account twitter page, yes yeah and, That's and some other things yep yeah. so some of those things are going to be coming yeah so we'll be making also announcements yep so we're making some announcements for all that kind of stuff too and um, maybe a giveaway too. We'd like to try to get like a follow train going, try to get um, subscribers and try to get more subscribers and maybe we'll do a t-shirt giveaway or something. What do you think, Lance? I think that sounds good. Sounds like a good idea. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. All right. Good deal. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. So that's you know, right, tell man, your friends sure. and get them, get them listening and watching this show. Uh, if you're enjoying it, I'm sure somebody else would too if they just don't know about it yet so exactly um get all your hockey get all your flyers hockey fans together and let them know that uh this is the place to be in order to get all your best flyers information right here uh with the great writer extraordinaire lance green um so thank you very much for checking us out and uh we can't wait to see you guys next time and this is uh steel flyers you can find me on twitter at steel flyers 52 you can find all the great work from all the great contributors at steelflyers.com, from the great Perla Wisdom to the great Joe Bork, and of course, Off the Wall Hockey and Peyton on the Radio, and of course, Hockey Raiders Inc. and the Steel Flyers Podcast. Check us all out at www.steelflyers.com. Thank you for checking out the Hockey Raiders Inc. We will catch you all on the next episode. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>